Every time people got together all together in one place. Every time they got together all together in one place. See, I know we've been praying for a move of God. We've been believing for a move of God. But it's going to take us to come to that place that when we do come all together together, we truly are in one place. I'm not bringing in my doctrine. I'm not bringing in my theology. I'm just coming and let the Holy Spirit be spontaneous in my life. And you're going to see some powerful things. It took them 50 days in the book of Acts. 50 days to get it together. But when they got it together, come on. And when they got it together, the whole entire city was shaken. They waited 50 days for the Spirit of God to move in them. I promise you, they, they probably really didn't understand when Jesus said not that he days from now. The Holy Spirit's going to come on you, then the Holy Spirit's going to come within you. So there's a lot of things about to happen in this nation. Right. And right now he's starting in the house of the Lord. Because, you know, church, we got to be ready for what God's about to do. Right. See, the first time he came, they missed it. Because they were not prepared. They had their own perspective on how he was going to come. They had their own ideas how he was going to act. They had their own ideas how he was going to move. And when he did none of the above, he came and went and they're wondering what happened. See, church, we got to understand he's about to move again. Amen. Right. But i got to get rid of all that junk in my trunk. i got to get my mind clear. Right. He's got to defrag me all the stuff that's been parted to me. All the things that are on me. All the things imparted to me. All the things spoken over me. All the stuff ingrained inside of me. All the years of our life. We've done things that certainly our whole life. And it's almost like we really got to become God conscious. We're conscious about everything else. But we're going to have to become God conscious to be aware that things are going to change. They're not going to be the same. Church is not going to be the same. It's not going to look like you thought it was going to be. The revival is not going to look like you thought it was going to be. The move of God is not going to look like Come you on. thought it would be. So you're going to have to be ready to live in the spirit of spot and 80. You're going to have to learn to trust the Holy Ghost and come together as a body. Amen. Amen. Yeah, we want a move of God. We all want it. But I know the Holy Spirit is not going to move in a church when everybody's on a different page. Right. He's not going to bless you in your mess. That's right. So he's got to clean up the mess to bless you. Yes. So he's really going to start working in us that when we do come together Wednesday night, when we come together Thursday morning, when we come together Sunday, come in with an expectancy. Yes. Come in not knowing what God's going to do and know that things are going to get different. But it's going to be okay. How God can, can take care of it? Yes. Who knows what that's going to look like? I'm telling you, in, even in this last couple of weeks, I've seen a move of God that completely blew me out of the water. I saw, actually, it started in, started in Florida. I went to a Slavic church, a Russian church. They invited me on Pentecost Sunday. Amen. They said, you're going to teach us about Pentecost. I'm thinking to myself, how... You teach people about Pentecost. Right. How do you impart something like that to them? So I said, Lord, you know, that's going to be difficult. So the Islamic pastor, he, I never met these people before. They don't know me. I don't know them. So we already got a problem, okay? <laughs> so this, this year, big Islamic pastor comes up. He says, I don't know you. You don't know me. You don't preach the word, there's the door. Oh, I said, oh, okay, I'm ready to leave right now, you know. I can see it now. You Slavic church Russians take over. <laughs> but you know what's cool about our God? They came open. They were willing to let God move. Yes, they did not understand it. They did not know what God was going to do. They didn't know what that what crazy man was going to do. <laughs> but you know, they were willing. Amen. If I could see anything when I walked in, I could sense they were willing to learn. Amen. And I said, Lord, I, I want them to have such an encounter that no teach in the world will ever exceed an encounter. Yes. 
So I, I, there must be about 50 young kids. And I said, Lord, we need to move in here. They, don't, they need a Pentecostal visitation. They read the Word like we read the Word, but we've not encountered the Word or become one with the Word. They need an experiential reality. Church, we need an experiential reality of what God's about to do. We need a move of God that's going to be so powerful in here. I was just telling you the past in the office tonight. I was in a church locally here. We had a move of God so powerful, people couldn't speak. People could not speak because the power of God was so powerful in this church near here that all they could do was weep. Grown men on the floor weeping. The pastor loves to talk. He got up to the podium and just started crying. Hold on, shaking. Then he said, he's gone. They had a move of God. They had a move of God. See, too, God's going to invade the church, too. We're going to be on Holy Ghost invasion. Because He wants you to have a move. And in spite of us, He's been choosing to manifest His glory in the house of the Lord. And it took, becomes so tangible. That night in Florida, it was so tangible with the Russians. 50 kids come running up to the front. Teenagers, anywhere from 14, 13 to 25, are laying on the floor crying before God. Amen. Then all of a sudden, the adults ran up. They came up and the whole hall was just full of people. Just bawling because they were in the presence of the living God. Amen. It was experience of reality. He's a holy God. Amen. He's a reverend God. Yeah. And then like I say, woe is me, yeah. a man of unclean lips. They were crying out, repenting. And God just moved in there. Just moved over those people. There's nothing to teach after that. Just shut up and God move. Mm. That, that changed that church forever. Yeah. And now when I leave there, they had an experiential encounter of the God kind that no teaching could ever touch. Yeah. Yeah. And I believe that God's going to do it here. God's already started moving it here. He's already unifying you. There's been a <laughs> cleansing gone on. There's been a separation gone on. And that's all good. But God's getting you ready. There's going to be a move of God that's going to change this whole region. It's going to start tonight in this room. It's going to start tonight in this room. Because I'm believing that God's going to do it all around this area. He's going to do it tonight in this room. But He's got to get rid of your self life. He's not going to be about us. Some of us already have our night planned out. Some of us already have to know what time we're going to get out of here. So we already got it set on the heart, but we're leaving. Mm, come on. But what happens when God shows up? Right, come on. The church near here, we didn't get up till 1 o'clock in the morning. Oh, hallelujah. You know what? Nobody can watch us. Nobody can care. Nobody can care if it's 1 o'clock in the morning. We're in another church up in uh, Fresno. Saying that we're teaching about Pentecost. We're teaching about the move of God. We're talking about the Holy Spirit. That when God moves, everything changes. When the Spirit of God started moving in this church, it was in a home group, about 40 people. I've never seen this before. This is my first experience. The Holy Spirit was so powerful in the room. His spirit of spontaneity broke out. Everybody stood up and started to confess their sins out loud. To everybody. And not one person, there was not a spirit of judgment in anywhere in the room. They were bawling before a living God when they realized, whoa, I thought I was the guy unglued. I thought I was the guy with problems. Man, these people have whoa. But you know what? They embraced each other. I'm telling you stuff, sons and daughters, what they were confessing would make your hair stand up. And they were confessing in front of their wives, in front of their kids. They were confessing in front of everybody. But you know what? They were broken. Amen. They got broken. They said, whoa. God's in this place. And when that Holy Spirit starts coming on you, when it starts manifesting around you, you're just going to come unglued. It's going to become experiential reality that the presence of God is in the room. And you want to really see who you are for the first time. But that's to bring us into unity. To unify is to totally be one. But they've been to Tower of Babel, how many of they were one? Nothing was impossible. Nothing's impossible. 
when we become of like mindedness with one another, <coughs> when we can come into church together, all together, no agenda, not knowing what God's going to do with the pastors, not knowing what God's going to do with the praise and worship team, but totally trust Him. See, the process that you're all going through right now, all of you are going through something. It's because God is preparing you for His day of visitation. Amen. He's developed your intimacy with you now. Yes. You don't know Him in the, in the war, you'll never know Him in the peace. Right. And that's what your experience is preparation to build your faith to another level. No more living on a situational faith. Go away from situation to situation to situation, but to just live by faith. So he's bringing you to another place of faith together, all together. But we come out here, we're going to live by faith, not just by situational faith. That's why you're going through what you're going through. It's preparation for the day of visitation. Because it's going beyond anything you've ever seen before. You're going to have to have such an intimate relationship with him, you're going to know it's God doing it. Because it's not explainable things that God does. These people drove me home the other night because it was 1.30 in the morning telling me to get out of there. I guess my eyes must have been bugging out. I don't know. <laughs> well, they decided to drive me home. Here's how cool God is. We stopped and got gas, and the next thing we know, we're in Corona. We were down in Paris. Wow. These three guys in the truck just sat there weeping like, what just happened? <laughs> how do you explain things that God does? How do you explain that you're in a gas station and next minute, you're 25 miles away. They're unexplainable events. They're the wonders that God's about to do. A wonder something you cannot explain how God does it. He wants to do some wonders in this church tonight. We can lay hands on you. It's biblical. But tonight, if you have receptivity, if you'll open up yourself tonight, let the Holy Spirit move on you, I promise you, There'll be healing in this room. Amen. Amen. Nobody will leave here sick. Amen. Depression will be leaving in the name of Jesus. Amen. All the doubting Thomases will get healed. Amen. Because God's going to teach us to be one with Him. Amen. I mean, totally unified, one with Him. And it's going to be a powerful move when we see it. Amen? God Amen. is what God's heart's Amen. desire is. Amen. See, we are living in the last days. The final time of preparation in which those who respond will be brought into the higher level of corporate unity. How many God wants us a higher level of corporate unity? Yes. So we got to lift our vision higher. Yes. So we got to get into that place of corporate unity together with Him. If we become corporately unified together with Him, becoming one with one another and with Jesus, then we become the expression of his life and ministry. See, we're supposed to be an expression of his life and ministry. Horribly, we can do this together. And then they come one with him. And then when we're one with him, then all of us in this room are an expression of his life and his ministry. See, the world's waiting for this. They're waiting for the church of Jesus Christ called by his name to become unified. Amen. The world's waiting for it. They see it's schizophrenic now, the Church of Jesus Christ of America is schizophrenic. You got all kind of crazy stuff going on. Yes. There ain't no real unification. There's no real one. Yet, oh Lord, we want to move. Well, let's go get rid of your self life. That's a hard part. The self preservation is going to be broken off us. Mm -hmm. Psalm of Psalm 2.11, Lo, the winter's past. What does God say to us? See, there's been a winter season that you've been allowed to go through. It is in this winter season. It's like a desert time. It's like a barren time. It's like there's nothing happening in your life. No spiritual encounters. It's like nothing's going on. But see, it's in that winter time. It's in that barren time. That he eradicates, that he eradicates the old nature out of you to put his nature in you. It's in the barren time. When you think there's nothing spiritually going on. When you think everything is dead around you. When you think there's no life in it. It's in that time that God has brought you to get rid of all your self-preservation in you. Because it ain't about you anymore. Come on. We're here for Him tonight. Amen. We're here for Him tonight. Amen. But we got to get rid of all the self-preservation in us. 
always trying to do it our way. Yes, God, we want to do this, but then we do it our way. So he's taken to a barren place, a dry place. But it's in that place. When he takes you at the end of yourself, that's when he meets you. That's when it's spiritual reality to you. I know Jesus went in a barren place. When the Holy Spirit came upon him, where did he go? He went into the desert, right? Why? For that endowment become a reality. Yes, the Holy Spirit came on him. But yet it was not experienced around him until he got into a desert place. When he got into a barren place. Then all of a sudden the revelation of the impartation that came on him empowered him to overcome the, the wealth of the enemy around him. Instead he came out with power. But he had to go in that place. So you've been in that place. The church has been in that place. We're coming out. Yeah. But we're not coming out barren. We're coming out a new creation. Yes. Thank you, Lord. We're coming out with spiritual encounters of the God. God is going to change the marketplace. We're coming out with power to prevail. It's in Isaiah 6, 7. Or 6, nine, but don't worry about where it's in Isaiah 6. Maybe it's probably 6, 7. When it says this, the government was upon his shoulder. Remember reading that? Did you ever ask the Lord what that meant when this government was upon his shoulders? What God is saying, the mantle of the kingdom of our God was rested on him. Now here's the interesting part. That word government is mezra. The word mezra means power to prevail, to dominate. So the mantle of the kingdom of our God rested on him. And as we went to Calvary, he rested it on you. The mantle was on him, is the mantle on you. Power to prevail and to dominate, to overtake and run down the Babylonian system that's been binding you, even in the church. You got power to prevail. The word is in you. And God wants to get inside. I want you all to understand it. So you're all on the same page. That we're all together, together what God's about to do. The same spirit that came on is the same spirit on you. He's unified us to be one voice, one mind, one heart, one spirit. That we come all together, together, we're going to have an encounter. We're going to see a book of Acts again. Like we've never seen it. Because it's not going to be the same. Psalm, Psalm 2.11, the next person says, The rain has come and gone, it is no more. What are you telling us, Lord? We're not living on formal revivals. We're not living on the former outpourings. We're not going to live on somebody else's spiritual encounters. We're not going to live on somebody else's spiritual revelation. God said the rain has come and gone. It is the moment. We're not living in the former thing. I'm a God of this present moment. And I'm doing something new, extraordinary inside of all of you. I am freeing you from the indoctrination of man. From the religion of man. And all the programs and all the things that have bound you. All these many years that I had need of you. And now I'm freeing you. I gave you power to prevail. And the root word for Mesra is Sarah. Sarah had the power to prevail. She was able to birth beyond season. She was able to bring light to a dream and vision given because she had power to prevail. And you have it in you. And God's going to bring life back to your dreams. Hallelujah. God's going to bring life back to your visions. God's going to bring life back into His house. Hallelujah. We're going to birth something extraordinary in this generation. Some we've never seen before. Some we've never witnessed before. You're going to look like you're radical. Praise God. Amen. The time you got radical. Jesus, right, right now, getting to learn to become corporately together as one body, not bringing all that junk in us. Right. You know, trying to. Well, I don't like the way you preach. That's not the way I talk. Well, get over your bad self. <laughs> Suck it up, you know. This is an hour of the Holy Spirit's moving, and He's going to be listening. She's going to be listening, and we're going to have ears to hear what the Spirit of God is saying. It's not going to be a pat message every Sunday. It's not going to be every teaching. It's just going to be a flow of the Holy Ghost. We're going to come in here. Bam! God's going to heal. They're going to flow. The fire's going to come. The fresh oil, the fresh anointing, the authority of the Lord Jesus Christ is going to rise up in here. It's going to jack you up. It's going to lift you up. It's going to tear you up. It's going to set you free. It's all that God calls you to be. 
And you will be the church of Jesus Christ. And you will have an outpouring the world's never seen. And it won't be on somebody else's spiritual encounter, somebody else's spiritual revelation. But I can get into a lot more. I'm not. There's a, that broke my whole box right there. There's, there's so much I want to jump on you tonight. I just got to listen to the Holy Spirit. I want to. Because there's so much He wants to give you to free you from all the bondage that you've been in. All the fashion and form of man that's put on you. He wants to unify us where we are really truly one spirit. Amen. We're really one heart. When He has a need, I have a need. The book of Acts, man, they were all together. When someone had a need, brother, they had all things in common. Everybody gave up everything. Right. There was no selfishness, no self-observation. Brother, when they got all together together, they were together. There was no needs. Imagine that. 3,000 got saved in one day. I'm going to get down to real. I'm going to make this real to you. Let's get real. 3,000 people got saved in one day. Where did he get all the toilet paper? <laughs> Think about that, man. I know we need to move of God. Things are about to shift. So we got to be ready, man. 3,000 was saved in one day. Think about that. You know what the creation, yeah, you know what that created? How do we have to be unified? Now we're living all together together. And once you left that Jewish religion, you're an outcast. You can't go to market no more. You were done. Kind of, you got to be unified. Right. See, right now we, right now we, you know, kind of independent yet. We still have preservation yet. We, we pray for people. Well, I sure appreciate you praying. I'll go to my doctor's appointment tomorrow. <laughs> you just canceled it out. What was that all about? You just ruined it. And you might not say it verbally. But within your mind, yeah. Yeah, he prayed me and that was lost. Well. So I'll go to doctors some more anyhow. Then what's the sense of getting prayed for? That's right. Either he healed you or he didn't. That's right. Some miracles are instantly, some are process. And yet we don't really go through the process. It's training for reigning. Mm -hmm. It's to build your faith. Yeah. Some people you can heal them right away. Yeah. Then her faith is in that just one miracle. But they got to go through the process. Something happens, brother. A development of intimacy between the king and you by going through. Develop such an intimacy in you, such a strength inside you. Such encouraging words will fill you. Knowing that the Father has heard you and He's allowed you to go through what you're going through to build you for the greater that He promised for dreams that have been in you but now become alive inside of you with the power to prevail for the nation around you. Amen. It's right now. And we got power to prevail. Amen. We've got a pulled out of the Babylonian system. So that mantle that came on Jesus, the kingdom of our God, it came upon Him. He said it rested, the government was on what? His shoulders. So it's a mantle. Didn't say around his waist. Didn't say on his brain. Didn't say in his hands. But the governor of the kingdom, Hallelujah. that authority rested on him. Hallelujah. The Hebrew word is Mezra. And the Hebrew word for Sarah, they're one. Sarah had the power to prevail against all odds. But she had to birth it. So the succession of line of Isaac could come through. She had power to prevail when dreams and visions and everything eluded her 99 years old. I'm going to get pregnant, really? Mm. I don't think so. <laughs> Come on, well, let's get real. You know, 99, you want to have a kid? <laughs> you have to have your head checked, you know? <laughs> but she, she was given a word. She don't know how this sensation of time imprisoned her or stopped a dream that was given. She knew she had power to prevail. Mm. The root word for her name, Sarah, is Mezra. She understood it. She got that bed on her. When everybody was laughing at her, she prevailed. They might be laughing at you, daughter in the back, but you're going to prevail. Amen. The authority is in you. The word's inside you. 
Hold fast to your confession. Hold fast to the promises. Hold fast to the word. The wind that changes blowing around you. But I promise you, hold fast in the midst of the storm. Hold fast to your confession. Hold fast to the things he promised you and destined for you. Hold fast. You got, you're just like Sarah. You're about to break loose. You're about to birth. You're about to release. You're about to launch. You know, everything around you is about to be broken off of you. God said, I'm going to free you. And that change that binds you are coming off of you. There's a freedom coming over you. There's healing happening inside of you. I'm breaking that depression off of you. And everything the devil's trying to put on you, I'm freeing you right now. He just grab it, receive it, accept it. Amen. Amen. You're going to get it, son. You're going to have some fun. Because wherever God sends you, you're a pioneer. You're bold. You like to go out and do crazy things. That's what Dad loves about you. He tells us, man, I can put it on you, and I can send you, and I know you're running through. You won't sit there and question me why they're for and how for. You won't wait till somebody educates you. You won't wait for somebody denomination accepts you and give you a license to go fly. No, God says, I'll be right to side with one fly. And then, you got to do it, bro. It was birthed in you when your mother conceived you. Because God ordained it for you, for the hour he empowers you. Don't worry about the generation around you. The words of life are in you. My word will sustain you. Direction is coming to you. And a boldness is going to rise up in you. Hesitation, reservations coming off you. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. We're going to learn what it is to really flow. No more hidden agendas in church. No coming here with your ideas and all your witty inventions and all that other junk in our trunk. I'm just coming here. I am, Lord. Here I'm just as I am, Lord. Use me. I have no agenda. I have no program. I got no... So a lot of people come with agendas. There, anybody in church with agendas is dangerous. Because they're still living in self-preservation. It's all about them. But that's got to be broken off us. See, that's what got Adam and Eve in trouble. They became independent. See, we're raised in a generation to be independent. We're raised in a generation to be self-sufficient. And it's ingrained in us. And soon something happens, what do we do? We try to fix it. We try to fix it. We try to get in right away. What if you get to the place and you just said, okay, God, this is on you. Well, that's scary. Because your whole life you had to fix it. Your whole life you had to mend it. Your whole life you had to do something. And, and now all of a sudden God said, I got this. Do I trust him? See, self-preservation has to go. All right, we got to lose our identity. I believe it's in Luke 9. You can correct me later. Luke 9, Jesus ordained them. He appointed them. Then he sent them. And then he said some things to them that brought them. First thing he said, take no staff with you. See, the staff was their identity. That was their status symbol. That's how they were identified. It was their weapon. It was everything they were. So the first thing that he ordained them to send them, he said, get rid of your own identity. Get rid of your own identity. You're going to go for me? You can't take your staff. You can't, you can't be identified of who you used to be. The blind beggar. What was the first thing he did when Jesus came in the area? He took off what? His cloak, why? That was his identity. That's how they knew he was a beggar, by what he wore. But they knew people by their staff. So the first thing he says, man, don't take no staff. Whew. You then stopped him right there. Think about that. God said, give any of your identity tonight. I want you to be identified with me. No identity of you and how people address you, what titles on you, what position you're in, what status you're in. All that doesn't matter. We're a new creation in Him. Amen. He is our identity. Amen. He is our validation. He is everything that we are. Hallelujah. Leave your staff. <laughs> then He goes on to say, I'll put it in moderate language, leave your backpack here. Amen. Lord, you know that all my securities are in there, my Twinkies. <laughs> and now God, you're telling me all the stuff I carried my whole life they gave me security. Everything that I carried that was part of me, that I relied in and I trusted. First off, you're getting rid of my identity. That was a tough one, Lord. But now the things I've been carrying, 
I can't carry it off. He took it off. Your backpacks. So they just stop coming off of you. There's stuff you've been carrying. Stuff that you relied in. Stuff that you trusted in. Stuff that you believed in. And God said, I'm taking it off your back tonight. Amen. Yeah. And he's really messing with you. You've got a new identity, church. It's going to become a reality. You've got a new identity in him. We take on his identity. That's what makes us one. We get rid of all that junk that we've been carrying. We get rid of all of that. You know, he can't just leave things alone. He said, take no bread. God, we're in the desert. <laughs> you know, God, we're in the desert, God. Well, how could we forget about the feeding of 5,000, of 4,000? And all of a sudden, he gets rid of your identity. He gets rid of all your things that were security, identified, that made you comfortable, you know, all that stuff that with you. And then he said, I'm going to put you in a place. I will be the sole provision for you. There's no other place there's provision for you. I'll be the only source of provision for you. That's a new level of trust. How do we say to us there? And it goes on and on. Then it says, don't take any water. Man, you imagine that in the desert? But see, God wants us to get to such a place that everything we relied in and trust in has to go. We're going to have a move of God, church. But there can't be anything else in it. Because we'll want to touch it. You don't want to touch His glory. So I'll share my glory with nobody. So we're going, we're going that this is what this is all about. This is preparation. He is coming again. But we need to be prepared. And He may not come the way we think. It may not look the way we think. But I'll tell you one thing. When we become totally unified, that's His heart cry. That's His heart cry. I'm going to read to you in John tonight. You're going to understand this, man of God. For such a time as this, there's a set time, there's an appointed time under heaven for everything. He said, son, I'm aligning you with your set time. I'm aligning you with the appointed time they appointed for you. He said, son, everything's going to be new from this night forward, I promise you. There'll be no trapping of your mind. There'll be nothing to weary you, distress you. But son, in a quiet place, I will meet with you. I will validate you. I will assure you. You're my son in whom I'm well pleased. He said, son, I'm going to birth new dreams inside of you. Son, you're going to have the power to prevail. You're going to birth dreams and visions. Things you hoped for. Things you were crying for. Things you were bleeding for. And somebody stole them from you. And God said no more. He said, it's God's son. I'm going to restore things that stole from you. I'm going to redeem the time for you. And they're going to know that you and I are one. Amen. You'll be in his likeness image. When they see in the marketplace, they're going to see a transformed man into his life, into his image. An expression of his life in ministry. We'll, we'll be an expression of his life in ministry. When they see us, we'll be as he is. Can you imagine what we'll be like in here? No agenda. Well, can you imagine that? No more clocks in church. <laughs> Just think about that. I'll really step on your toes. I know God's about 10%. So you think, just take it this round. If God's about 10% and we have 24 hours in a day, that means 2 hours and 40 minutes belong to God every day. Are you giving Him 2 hours and 40 minutes? If not, you're robbing God. So when you come to church, if you didn't give anything all week, you better give it to the night. <laughs> you got a deficit going, man. You must, you must make it up. It's hard tonight. But I'll stay in the cows come home. Amen? Amen. I just don't, I just thought I'd throw up a match with you. 24 hours. 10% belongs to him. It's 2 hours and 40 minutes. The only you can answer, you give him that much time every day. And everybody's starting to think and analyze him. Well, don't they know my busy life? Don't they know I do this? Don't they know I do that? And God says, really? Is that more important than my time with you? I'm trying to unify you. I want you to have my heart, my mind, my spirit. And all I ask out of you is to be a good steward. If I cannot trust you to be a good steward and to manage two hours and 40 minutes a day, what's going to happen the rest of the day? He said, you're going to lose it. You couldn't even manage this much. 
I gave you this much. I only wanted this much. And you couldn't manage it. You're not a good steward. You, you, you couldn't handle 40, 12 or 40 minutes. Can I trust you with more? If two hours and 40 minutes trips you? Just think about that. We're the honorable people of God and good stewards of all that he gave us. And all he asks out of 24 hours is just two hours and 40 minutes. And I can take it even further mess with you. God wants to mess with people here tonight. Just think about tithing. He gives you 90% to play with. He gives you 10%. See, it's not about tithing is not about money. Tithing is a teach you to be good so I gave you 10%. That's all I'm asking. You give me 10%. I want to see how well you can manage the 10. Are you a good steward? Or can you manage the 10%? Can you steward the 10%? Can I trust you as a manager of my finances on earth with 10%? If you cannot manage, be a good steward of, and have integrity with the 10, you're going to lose the 90. See, I'm messing with you now. I get in this place, all kind of stuff comes out of me, brother. I got the car running, I'm ready to run. <laughs> Let me see out the parking lot. We're unified on this. We're both running. Marsha, you're going to have to catch up. Stephen got stoned. I ain't ready for that. But see, I'm throwing all kind of stuff. I want you to start thinking. Start using your brain again. Start becoming unified again. Start becoming one with Him again. Amen? Amen. Amen. This is what this is all about. All this is all about that. Psalm 133, 1 to 3. Behold how what? Good and pleasant is your brother. What? Dwell together in unity. How awesome is that, man? Amen. Jeremiah 32, 39. I will give them one heart, one way, that they what? May fear me forever. For what? The good of them and what? The children after them. What kind of legacy we believe for our children? If we're not unified, we can't flow as one, then we expect our children. But secession is going to happen after us. That's why we got to dominate. That's why we've got power to prevail. To bring down the Babylonian system of the body. The spirit is on you. That man was in you. Look it up. You'll see it. Let's go to John. John 17, 21. My brain was out to lunch. Because I'm trying to listen to the Holy Spirit and talk to you at the same time. Because he wants every one of you tonight to leave here with something fresh. Amen. Something awesome. But it's fresh oil, fresh fire. Yes. Then when we come all together on Sunday, we meet Sunday, we'll come with no agenda. We won't have our roast in the oven. We won't have our favorite restaurant planned out. We come for a move of God. God, we're here for you. Amen. That ain't about us anyway. It's, we're here for you, God. We're going to give you everything when we come together. Because it's about you. We need a move of God, but it's got to be about Him. That means all our agenda and all our programs on Wednesdays and Thursdays and Sundays, it's got to go. That's going to be hard for you. We've got to set time and, and you know, we, we, we just leave. I was just in a church. And I even told the people, I said, you people are so programmed in here, it's so in you, that even after I'm telling you this, and warning you to this, one o'clock will come and everybody will leave the church and I'll still be preaching. <laughs> they started laughing, like, <laughs> oh, that's funny, apostle. One o'clock come, I'm preaching myself. <laughs> but I said to the pastor, I'm staying another day. Really? I said, yeah. So they came back, boy, I tell you, I had fun with their brain. Man, I said, well, you people are so programmed. Have 90% of people left, they didn't know they left. That's just what they do. They don't think about it. We just start saying, what are we doing? What are we here for? The move of God. Yes. Right. To honor Him. Yes. No pressure on time. We're not bound by time. We don't serve time. Amen? Amen. Paul said it's time to redeem time. Well, what does that mean? If you've got to redeem something, it's in a fallen state. Think about that. When this stuff would have me fell. Then now they're under 
the dictates of time. How do you redeem it? Live outside of it. Live in the spirit. Live and move and have your being where? In the spirit. When the reaper overtakes the sower, how can that be? It's outside of time. Boom, it's an hour. So the reaper overtakes the sower in that realm of the spirit. When you learn how to live and move and have your being in the spirit, become one with him, everything will be instant. You'll live in that now moment. You'll live in that time that God ordained for you. But it'll start speaking so clear to you. You'll be in that realm of glory that He desires for you. Where He can move over you in a very powerful way, daughter. See, you have a voice. You have a specific call upon you. There's a specific anointing on you. That does it all you watch the days ahead of you. I'm going to remove the veil that's been around you. That's been restricting you. And I'm going to free you. I'm going to launch you. And that voice will be heard to many around you. You'll sing a new song. You'll sing a song of praise. It'll come out of you. Because praise is so down inside of you. It's been like bottled up inside of you. Tonight I'm taking a cork off. And it's going to pop out of you. And daughter, they're not going to stop you this time. Man's not going to get his hand on you and mess with you this time. He said, no, I'm for you. If I'm for you, who could be against you? Lord, I'll free you. You're free to be who I called you to be. And you're going to let it out. You're going to get free. And tonight I'm healing you. You know what I'm talking about. That's going to be healed tonight. Amen. John 17, 21. This is God's prayer. How many is the chief intercessor? This is God's prayer. That they all may be one. As thou, Father, art me, and I in thee, that they also may be one in us. See, this is his prayer for us. That it's he and the Father are one. He wants us to be one with him. See, Enoch was so one with God, he was no more. He had no more self-life. It was all gone. He just became so much like God, he was as God. Because he came one with God. See, that's his desires. That we be as him. As he was one with the Father and Father one with him, his heart desires that we become one with him as he is one with the Father. To imagine becoming one with him? Wow. That the world may believe that thou hast sent me. How's the world going to know that he was sent? When we become one. In him, through him, by him, one with the Father. The such that Jesus show us the Father. When you see me, you've seen the Father. Amen. See, you're supposed to be an expression of Him. Yes. When people have an encounter with you, they should have met Jesus. Amen. You're an expression of His life. You are an expression of His ministry. You should be so one with Him that when they meet you, they've met Him. This is His heart. This is how the world's going to know. That you are truly one with the Father and one with the Son and are one with you. You're completely one together that the world may believe you have sent me. Here's the cool part. And the glory which thou givest me, I have given to them. Think about this a moment. The glory you have given me, I have given them. So when I see Pastor, I don't see him. I don't see Him. When I see you, I just see the glory. When I see you, I see the glory. When I see you, I see the glory. What am I getting across to you? I can't judge you. I become one with you. See, don't you, you recognize the glory. When we see each other, we see the glory. We don't see the former things. We see the glory. And the glory is all over you. Tonight the peace of God is going to fill you. Tonight the Lord said I'm rejuvenating you. Amen. This tiredness has been plaguing you. No more limitations tonight. I'm healing you. Amen. I am the bread I am. Amen. I am in the midst of you. In a secret place I have heard you. When you thought you were all alone and crying out, I was there right beside you. Amen. And I cried with you. And I promise you tonight, this night, I will answer you. I've been maturing you and 
prepare you for what I'm about to do for you that you desire me to do for you. I had to rearrange everything around you, bring order to all the affairs concern you. I had to bring down some things to bring up some things. And now, my daughter, you're free. Amen. Amen. See, we can't, we can't judge each other. We can't judge each other no more. It's the same glory, Lord, you gave me. The same glory is on Him. When I see Him, I just see the glory. Still look at each other and start seeing the glory. Can you imagine what that'll do? Judgmental spirit will leave the house of the Lord. Amen. You won't be out there judging anyone. I'm about you. I don't qualify to judge. I can't sit in that seat. But when I see my brother, I see my father's eyes. I see the glory. I see the peace of God that passes all understanding. I see the revelation birthed in you. The understanding rising up inside of you. To raise you up at this hour that he has called you. It's going to become experiential reality. All the word that's been in you is now going to come to life around you. And it'll be a power inside of you to hold out a babbling system around you. To rise up in power of Jehovah. You have power to prevail, to overcome and to dominate by the authority and amount of Christ on you. The glory covers you. Okay, we just not we see each other. We just see the glory. Isn't that awesome? It makes life so sweet. Just see the glory. We will never judge each other again. Because why? I'm looking for the glory. He saw the glory on in Gideon. Not Gideon. Yeah. Was it Gideon? It was one of those guys hiding the wine press. It was it Gideon, wasn't it? Yeah, one of those guys. Yeah. Leroy. The little guy. The little guy hiding the wine press. But he spoke to his destiny. He spoke into his destiny. He started speaking to each other's destiny. They see your brother, they're going to see the glory. There's a robe all around you to cover you. When the prodigal son came home, son, he ran down. Yes. What did he do for his glory? Yes. He covered him. I got you covered, son. Amen. They're not going to see you, but they'll see me. That's right. And you'll have a witness. Because my glory is going to fill you with the peace that you've been crying for. Amen. For the direction you've been seeking for. For the purpose for what your purpose for. Lord, what is my purpose? And so I'm about to open it up to you. My word's about to come alive inside of you. I'm going to cause an awakening in you. See, I'm waking up everybody around you. This is a wake-up call. Romans 13 talks about it's high time, now time, to wake up. The hour's far spent. That was written 1,900 years ago. How much more now we need to wake up? Think about that. Now when you look at each other, the glory which thou gives me, I have given them. That they may be one. That will bring us into oneness. We're not judging each other anymore. We see each other, we just want to see Jesus. Yeah. You just want to see Jesus, brother. Everywhere you go, you'll be a witness. Acts 1 8. It says, You shall receive power. After the Holy Spirit comes upon you to be my witness. Amen. We've been too busy doing and not being. You will be that expression. You will be in that image. You will walk in that likeness. The empowerment of the Holy Ghost is coming on you. It's like the fire of God is igniting in you. God is going to put a fire in you. A confidence in you. A boldness in you. A steadfastness in you. The words are like a river going to flow out of you. And when you stand before the multitude, they will see my glory. Amen. 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 Wow. If they all may be one, even we are one. Well, that'll, that'll make the church one. Yeah. You imagine the church with nobody judging? Just seeing the glory on each other. And speak to that glory. Amen. Speak to that what you see. Amen. I see my father's eyes. Imagine what this will do for all of you. I and them, and thou and me. They may be what? Perfect in one. So we're going to be perfect. Amen. It's when we become one with Him. Come out of our self life, our selfishness, our self preservation. And I become holy, one with Him. Then we'll be made perfect. 
That's what it's all about, amen? amen. Perfect in one. And the world may know that that has set me. They're going to know us by our love. But a peace is going to cover all of you. Yeah, there's, there should be some repentance going on because, you know, we've got our tongues wagging. <laughs> We're all guilty. <laughs> well, just repent now. You know what I'm talking about. Because even today, well, but, 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 you, oh, no, you need to repent right now. I ain't going there. But it's out there. Just repent. What did John do? Everywhere he preached about what? Repent of what? The kingdom of God's at hand. Then what happened one day? Jesus showed up. Amen. You get that spirit of repentance, man. That's it. We start learning how to repent as a body tonight. He said, Lord, hey, guilty as charged, Lord. I talked about Sister Boom Boom. Father, grab a buck. I, I talked about them all. <laughs> you know the God, but he comes out with <laughs> You know what I'm talking about, all right? Just repent. I need to repent. <laughs> That's all the world's going to know us, church. Exactly. Even when you're running to another brother and sister, you're not going to see whether they're Catholic, Baptist, Presbyterian, all that other, whatever you want to call it. I just see Jesus. Amen. And I started speaking to Jesus in them. Yeah. And there's going to be such a love coming out of you that will emanate from you, that will bring such healing to those around you. Because they're going to see that you're not judging them, they're loving them, and you're not trying to change them. Our job, my job, is not to change anybody. I'm just a mailman. That's his job. So when I see my brother and sister, just love them. We don't know what they've been through. I need to see the glory on them. I just need to love on them. That's all they need is love. They're going to know we're one with the Father, and we can love them no matter what state condition we find them in. And maybe you can love them. I got a little friend, a little Scotsman friend about this tall. I've been working with him about three years. I met him on an airplane. Find out he's my neighbor. <laughs> I lived there two years and didn't know the guy. But to make a long story short, I never preached to him. I just loved him. Man, the way he talked. Help me, Jesus. <laughs> just loved him. He's on fire for Jesus today. Amen. I became, I, I was being the witness of not trying to witness. Just be the witness, church. Too many people out there trying to do a witness and not being a witness. That's right. It's a big difference. We're made as likeness. We're going to be perfect, amen? We're going to know you have sent me and have loved me and thou has loved, as thou has loved me with that perfect love. Love comes a multitude of sin. We've got to get a, a definition from heaven about what love is. Most of the love that we know is I love you as long as. And tomorrow I'm going to get into that, Song of Solomon. I'm going to get into some things. I'm going to teach on Song of Solomon tomorrow if the Lord allows it. I, I can't say He will, but, you know, whatever happens tomorrow, amen? I'm very careful. I don't, want to, I don't come with a patent message. I got all those beautiful notes and I carry these beautiful Bibles and stuff. They're just religious people. They take them all apart. They just think they're going to get another beautiful little two-minute sermon and three hymns and a hurry and we're all going to be happy. No, I'm going to pray and that's day up. Wow. Father, I will that they also whom thou hast given me be with me where I am. So he wants you where he is. You mean you have to come out of where you are to come into. Amen? Yes. It's by the way of the cross. What happens at the cross? Your self-life gets crucified. Yes. Too many times we're talking about the cross, but never getting on the cross and dying to the cross, then from follow him. Yeah. Well, I will they also, whom thou have given me, be with me where I am. This is his cry. <coughs> this is why he went to Calvary, so you can be where he is. He wants you with Him. He wants you to be one with Him. That where I am, they may, that where I am, that they may behold my glory. See, if you walk with Him, become one with Him, you'll walk in that glory. You'll be looking for the glory in everybody. How can I bless them? Even the heathen around you, just love one of them. And I've seen some pretty bad dudes out there 
in some pretty bad places, then when you start really loving somebody, I don't care how tough they are, how mean they are, I've been with gangbangers, street, you name it, but you'll walk up, you start loving them, Dude, will you put your hand on me for it? Get, get your hand off me. What's that, what's that on you, man? Something just touched me. Man, what's wrong, man? What's wrong with you, boy? Next thing you know, I start crying. What, what happened? Hallelujah. That love. Yes. Hallelujah. That touch of the Father. Uh, and that, the moment of that tough guy, he braced in the presence of a living God. To so the such an anointing coming over the church of Jesus Christ, it's going to be like an atomic bomb. That when it goes off, it infuses everything around it. We're going to be so saturated with God's love that everywhere we go, we're going to impart that love. But the other side of it also, we're going to bring holy conviction. They will be so broken, they get into your presence. They're going to feel this love that they don't understand. This love is saturating them. And all of a sudden, they're going to be this repentance. Because they're in, they can feel the glory. They feel the holy conviction. See, conviction heals. And you're going to start seeing this conviction. The last three or four minutes, there was a lot of Holy Ghost conviction. There was a lot of repentance going on. And all of a sudden, heaven opened up. And then it was a great manifestation. Supersede any teaching. We need experiential reality. We need a move of God. Amen. Wow. Well, thank you, Lord. To be with me, I am that may behold my glory which thou hast given me, for thou lovest me before the foundation of the world. O righteous Father, the world have not known thee, but I have known thee. But these have known that thou hast sent me. They was going to know that you've been sent. When you start walking in this, this is what God's saying the power of one's all about. That's the power of one. We can change the world. The book of Acts changed the whole entire city. When they became one, things happened. When people become unified and see the glory, when we come in, we just see the glory of one another. We don't know what their brother and sister's been through. Just see the glory and start loving on them. Start ministering to them out of the glory. I mean, there's no self-preservation. There's no life of us. There's no more staff. There's no more identity. Your backpack is gone. Your supernatural vision is coming through. He's Jehovah. He can provide for you. Hallelujah. Even in a desert place, Hallelujah. there's provisions for you. Even in a dry place, there's provisions for you. We're not living in a form of movement. We're not living in a form of revelation. God's speaking some fresh stuff now. Then he goes on and says in Psalm, Psalm 2, the flowers are in bloom. Mm -hmm. Sons and daughters were entered into a springtime of the year. Mm -hmm. A spiritual unawakening that's been promised. Mm -hmm. It's starting to bloom. Jeremiah, what do you see in 110? I see the blossom of a banana tree. Mm -hmm. Jeremiah, you see well. You saw the beginning of a spiritual outpouring. Mm -hmm. We're about to see the birthing, the springtime of the year. A new life is about to come to the church. Hallelujah. It's going to be radical. Then he goes on to say the birds are singing. There's a new song of praise coming through the earth. Psalm Revelation says this, the voice of many waters. It's that song of praise out of heaven where angels in harmony with you are singing about his glory. That's a new praise coming through the earth. It'll be a sound of many waters. Then he goes on to say, the voice of the turtle dove can be heard in the earth. There is a new prophetic anointing, an apostolic anointing coming on the end time prophets. They're not going to be the glory prophets. They're going to say it like it is. But they're going to say it out of God's glory. Amen. With such power, such authority, when Peter spoke, it was so, they died. That's going to put the river of fear back in the house of the Lord. Amen? Amen. So we'll continue on tomorrow. I can go on all night long, and I probably would if you let me, but because I know the hour is at hand. And I, I can sense it, and, and you've you got to be ready, church. And they're going to know us when we become truly one. My daughter, let's wait, switch her. God bless you. As we're looking at you, there's a lion behind you. 
And that line is the line of Judah, I promise you. Amen. And that line of Judah lives within you. And God's time to raise up, daughter, and call out that line inside of you. And call that line out of you, that line of Judah that's in you, to devour every line that's been around trying to lie to you and devour you. And God said, tonight it's through. He said, I've ordained you, I've called you, I've purposed not destined you. He said, from this night forward, I will awaken a fire inside of you. I'll put a confidence in you. And in the marketplace, they're going to see you. They're going to see me in operation in you and through you for the dispensation. It's going to be awesome. Amen. My, my bro in the orange. God bless you, bro. Look at you, bright and shiny, all back there. <laughs> it's going to be awesome for you, man of God. You're about to have a Holy Ghost encounter. And God wants a spiritual reality. He wants it real to you. Because he knows he gets it settled in you. There is no stopping you. When you get your teeth into something and you know what it is, you get you get into it. And God's I'm gonna get you into it. I'm gonna have such a visitation with you. I'm gonna put such a fire on you. I'm gonna be a father that's gonna love you, never abandon you or forsaken you. A father who's made a promise to you, and the father is faithful and true. I will not disappoint you. I will wrap you up my arms and I will send you. I will be with you. And so we're gonna change communities, me and you. But it's all gonna be you. Pray for people. They want Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Come some wine. Come on. <laughs> I'll stay all night, bro. Don't get me sorry. I can call it Amen. <laughs> you know when Jesus came and he found his disciples asleep, and he told them, "Could you not stay awake one hour and pray?" Amen. When the ten virgins came, five came with oil, the other ones didn't. And five were came five came in and the other ones were left out because they were not ready. But today I believe that we heard we heard a word from the Lord. Amen. That we better get ready. <laughs> that we better get ready. Yeah. No seriously people, we need to be ready and stay ready. Yes. Because we never know when the Lord's going to show up. But I appreciate that word that came forth. Amen. Apostle Bill, a timely word. Well, especially for this church. I can only speak for this church. Amen. And I want to thank you again for, for coming and imparting that word to each and every one of us. And to those people who received the word. And Brother Bill will be praying for people if you need prayer after. We pick, we're going to pick up an offering for Brother Bill tonight. Amen? Amen. Amen. So if you guys want to get ready, just give from your heart and not your wallets. Forget tomorrow morning, Brother Bill's gonna be with us again at 11. Pastor Marcia at the well. We want to thank you guys for being here. Don't forget Sunday morning, invite someone to church. Amen. 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 Did you guys receive the word? Yes. Tell you what, Brother Bill's always on time every time, boy. You never know, he's gonna come and shake this church up, and maybe we need a little bit of shaking. Yes. Right. Amen. How come it's so quiet in here? <laughs> Brother Dave, put some music back in there. <laughs> Amen. Stand. If anyone needs prayer, special prayer, Brother Bill's gonna be here at the altar with us. Amen. Let me pray over the altar.
Heavenly Father, we thank you for this gift, Father. We thank you for this offering. We thank you for the seed, Father. And we thank you for the sower, Father. I pray, Father God, in the name of Jesus, that you will return the seed back to the sower, Father, and cause the seed to multiply over and above, Father. I thank you, Father God, for what you're doing, Father God, with Apostle Bill, Father. I pray, Lord Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord Father God, that your hand will be upon him, Father God, as he travels through the highways and byways, Father God, wherever you take him, Father. I pray that you would always send angels before him, Father God, in the name of Jesus. To prepare people's hearts, souls, and minds, Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord Father. And that you would return him back to his family, Lord Father God, sound and safe, Father. In Jesus' name, Lord. Amen.